Hello and welcome, I'm your code monkey. So the UNTS store is currently running a really awesome summer sale. It's got tons of awesome assets on sale and there are flash deals up to 70% off. The flash deals are different on every single day. Each of them has a different theme. So Unity challenged me to build something using one of these assets from one of these days. So let's go ahead and build something fun over here with the Fantasy Friday flash deals. We're going to use a bunch of these assets to make a really nice fantasy RPG. Also, this video is sponsored by Unity. Okay, so I've created an Unity project. Now, the first thing we probably should get is some kind of character controller. So let's go ahead and use this one, the Easy Character Movement 2. This is a really nice kinematic character controller. I've installed it on my project and here it is, a really nice demo scene. So this one supports pretty much any kind of terrain. So over here we've got some rough terrain works, we've got some stairs, and yep, that also works. This one can also jump. We've got slope limits so we can override what is wonkable and what it isn't. There are some bunch of moving platforms. There are some things that can make you jump higher. It can also interact with a bunch of physics. So yep, this is a really awesome, really cool character controller. And there's also a demo that comes with an animated character. So let's go ahead and use this one as our nice base. Now instead of just this generic character, let's make sure to use something a bit more interesting, a bit more fantasy. So we have this pack, the Medieval Civilians and Soldiers. This is a pack with a ton of characters, all of them looking really nice. They are all super high detail. Here we've got a nice demo scene with all the characters. And yep, this one really has tons of variety, characters of all kinds. So let's go ahead and pick one of these. So one of these knights at the end looks pretty nice. So here I basically just drag the brand new character. Then I just attach the scripts that the other character had. I also assign the same animated controller that has the same animations. And if you look at that, here we have a nice working character. So we've got a nice character controller and we have a nice custom character. And now to make it look a little bit more interesting, let's use a really nice custom shader. Using custom shaders is a really great way to make our objects look completely different. The exact same object using different shaders made them look massively different. So let's go ahead and use this one, the MK2 stylized shader. This one has a lot of demo scenes that has a lot of effects. For example here, showcasing some nice artistic effects, all kinds of different shading. All of them look really nice, very stylized. Then we've got examples of all kinds of outlines we can do with this shader. Here we've got all kinds of shading styles looking really interesting, definitely very unique. Again, if you were to use something like this, your game would definitely stand out, which is one of the biggest challenges nowadays. So that is why a custom shader, especially a custom soundlight shader, can really help your game stand out and look much better. So anyways, with all these, I would like to have a nice cell shaded stylized look. So over here with our custom character, really just go into all of these pieces and really just modify the shader. Let's go inside the MK, the Tune, URP. Go into standard and let's use the simple plus outline shader. And if without the character looks a little bit more interesting, a little bit more stylized. Next, now that we have a character, let's use a really nice environment. So let's grab this really awesome modular castle and dungeon. This is a giant pack with an insane amount of elements. It's got over 1300 prefabs, all of them modular, so you can build pretty much any castle you want. Here I have it in the project and you can see the massive amount of objects over here on the showcase scene. Really got an insane amount. There's some really nice statues. There's all kinds of rocks. There's all kinds of pieces to make pretty much any castle you want. Pieces of any shape, any size. You've got all kinds of nice torches. There's some windows, a ton of doors, all kinds of nice, interesting decoration. Even got some nice gargoyles, a bunch more statues. So yep, insane amount of pieces to make pretty much any castle you want. Now for me, one of the skills that I absolutely unlock is simply in terms of level design. That is really something that I cannot do myself. But thankfully, all of these assets all come with a really nice demo scene. And yep, so here we have the demo scene for this asset. It's got a really nice lava river that looks really cool. And then it's got all kinds of parts. So there's a giant castle up there, another different castle over there. So yeah, we can definitely use this as a nice starting point for our fantasy RPG. We can take our character that already works and just dump it over here to fly around and walk around on this environment. So yep, here we have our character and yep, we can now walk around. Let's go up these stairs. And actually the door doesn't open, so let's actually manually open it. So over here, just find those game objects and just disable them. So there you go, got the nice door so I can go inside. And if there you go, I can explore this nice castle just like this. Okay, so far so good. Now instead of manually having to delete some game objects in order to go through the door, let's actually be able to interact with the door in order to open it. And for that I'm actually going to use my own asset, the CodeMonkey Toolkit. This is basically a collection of 40 tools to help you make games better and faster. It's got a ton of very useful tools. The asset comes with a really nice editor window where over here you can easily browse and see all the tools that are included over here. Each of them does something different, so each of them is useful in a different scenario. Over here, like I said, we want to make some kind of interaction system. So for that, let's go and use literally the interaction system. This one is quite simple. Basically, I can look at something and interact with it. So over here on this demo scene, I can interact with this button, push the button, change that one. Over here, talk to this random NPC and say something. And over here, interact with this door. And if there you go, the door opens. So yep, this is awesome. Let's go ahead, apply the same interaction system onto our nice environment. Doing that is very simple. I just went ahead and made a simple script that implements the I interactable. So that is part of that interaction system. And over here, just implement the functions that the interaction system needs. And that's really it. There's nothing else we need to do. Over here, it already used the animator in order to go and play an animation in order to open or close the doors. 
So here on the main gate object, I went ahead and I added that main gate script. I also added a box highlighter so that the interaction system can find this object. So now here I am. Let's go ahead and approach doors and see if we can interact. Just approach. And if there you go, we've got a button to open and close the gate. Press the button. There you go. Opens. Press it again. Closes. And here there you go. Awesome. Okay, so we can now very easily interact with pretty much any kind of object in our world. Next thing that every fantasy RPG has is going to be some NPCs. So let's go ahead and do that since we already have the interaction system. It doesn't really need anything else. So once again, back to this pack, let's go ahead, pick one of these random characters and let's pick one of these. Then over here in our world, let's just drag our NPC. So just drag it over there, just a nice character right in there. Again, same thing, add a nice box collider, just to make sure that it's interactable. Then over here for the script, same thing, very simple, just implement the interactable interface, just implement all the functions. And over here, we can add whatever logic we want to interact with this NPC. And over here, let's go ahead, let's open up the door and then let's approach the NPC. And as soon as we get close, let's talk. There we go, we're talking to the NPC. All right, awesome. So you have this, how easy it is to add interactions to pretty much any object, any NPC, any anything. And those interactions can be whatever you want. In a little bit, we're going to make a nice quest system. But for now, before that, since over here we already have a nice solid base, every fantasy game is going to need some spells, so let's add some of those. Over here we've got the nice spells pack. This is a really giant pack with a ton of spells, and all of them look really nice. This one has some really nice projectiles. So let's go ahead, for example, and use some of these fire projectiles. So we've got a particle effect for basically just casting the spell. And then we've got the actual projectile itself. So as this one moves, yep, it looks really nice. So yep, let's go ahead and use these. Then for casting the spell itself, let's use something fun. Let's make the character literally just raise their arms, cast the spell, and then fire the spell. So for that, we're going to need a nice, simple and custom animation. And for that, Unity actually doesn't support editing humanoid animations by default. But one excellent tool that helps you do that is Umotion. This is a really excellent tool if you want to do any kind of animation, whether it be making animations from scratch or just tweaking some animations. This tool is really awesome. You can do all of that directly inside Unity. So over here, let's just open up the two windows. So just go on the Umotion editor, open up the clip editor. Yep, there it is. And let's also open up the other one, so the pose editor. Now let's create a brand new project, a humanoid project. And let's go ahead and drag our skeleton over there onto the game object to choose on the pose editor. And okay, we have our animation. So let's just go ahead and generate our keys. Then we can just select each of our bones individually. And over here, let's just raise it up just like that. So raise up that one. Then also raise up the other arm. So just kind of like that. Yeah, there you go. Kind of like this. Then let's just add some more frames just so we have basically the same movement. So there you go. That's literally all we need. Just a hands up. We don't need any transition. We're going to make that in a very interesting way. So now that we have this animation, here in the animation editor, we can see, okay, there's the normal idle animation. And then we've got the charging spell animation, which literally just has the arms up there. So then how do we transition from idle into upwards? That is very simple. We can just go here on the character animator and we can add a separate animator layer. This one calling it upper body. And on this one, just use the charging spell animation. However, we want to be able to charge spells and be able to run at the same time. So the way we achieve that, basically play a different animation on the upper body versus the lower body. The way we do that is over here on this one, we click on this little gear icon and over here we add a mask for just the upper body. So this is an avatar mask. In your project files, you can just right click, create, go into animation and create a new avatar mask. And over here, basically the one that I've created over here on the humanoid, we can see this mask is only being applied to the upper body. And now with this one, we can make sure that animation only plays on these body parts and the other, the base layer, this one still has all of the idle wonk animations, all of those. This one is still going to be applied basically to all the legs. So then just writing a simple code. So something that use the animator and over here is just a function to handle the upper body animation. So if I'm charging the spell, if so, then I'm going to set the weight on the animator. So the set layer weight is going to set to one, meaning it's going to play that animation. If not, it's going to play zero, meaning the animation on that layer will not play. So over here, if I press the left mouse button, if there you go, raise the arms, finally it go, basically it goes back down. And it works whether it be on idle and whether it be wonking. So basically the legs also work independently. So I can raise the arms, lower the arms, and yep, it looks quite nice. And pretty fun, if I just spam, yeah, it kind of looks like the character is jumping, kind of flying. That's kind of fun. So I guess you could use something like this to make some kind of very silly flavor bird kind of game. So yep, avatar masks are really awesome. Animations are really cool. Okay, now that we have this, the character with the hands in the hair, now I can really just spawn some kind of casting projectile. And then when I let go of the mouse button, let's fire the projectile forward. So that's some pretty simple logic. So over here on the player character, I just added an empty game object. There it is over there, just an empty game object above the head. So basically that's where we're going to spawn the casting particle effect. And then a simple function just for that. So when we press down the mouse button, let's instantiate the charge one. And when we let go, let's just spawn a projectile. So over here, if I hold left mouse button, if there you go, nice charging a spell. And as soon as I let go, and if there you go, fires a nice projectile and blows up. So I can charge the spell, go, and if there you go, it goes, it lands, it burns and blows up everything. Okay, great. So we have some nice projectiles on our game. Next thing is how this level actually has a super cool great hall around here. 
So it's on the upper part, and if we go inside, yep, it's a really nice hall, looks really cool. However, it looks a bit dead just because there's no actual light shafts. That is something that you usually see in any kind of fantasy game, especially something like this where you've got some windows. Usually you expect to see some light shafts, some god rays. So to implement that, we can use the excellent volumetric light 2. This is a really great tool. It helps you make some volumetric lights that look absolutely gorgeous. This is definitely an excellent tool, and volumetric lights is one of those things that you might not initially notice, but your brain will definitely notice, okay, something seems a bit off, and if you add them, then your game will look much, much better pretty much by default. So over here, the asset comes with a really nice demo scene. It is showcasing how you can have volumetric lights. Look at this, they look absolutely gorgeous, and of course, they even support some color. So by adding this, our really nice quarty on the area will look much better. The way that it works is just with the nice volumetric light component. And this one over here, it's actually just one giant light. It is not three separate lights. Again, the sole thing is volumetric, meaning it actually goes through spaces and then deforms the shape for it. So here, just one light, and then it's being cast through these three separate windows. So over here, I just added some nice lights like that, just to make it have a few god rays, some nice light shafts. It already looks quite a bit more interesting. And again, this whole thing is very nice and dynamic. So if I move the light around, so over here, as I move the light around, you have notice how, again, the whole thing is volumetric. So it's not actually bypassing through this wall. It actually goes around it on each side. So the whole thing is very much physically accurate and looks really nice. Okay, now let me give you one quick, very important tip. If you're making a game and you're playtesting your game on a pretty massive level, that is actually going to impact your iteration speed by quite a lot. Just because every time you head on play, it is going to load that giant level. That is going to take quite a while. So usually what you should have is you should have some kind of sandbox scene, something that is very bare bones, where you can basically build all kinds of mechanics, and then apply those mechanics to your nice big levels. So if that's basically what I did over here, just create a brand new empty scene, and just place my character controller, as well as over here the nice NPC. So I can go, I can talk to him, yep, everything still works. Now in this scene, it makes it much easier to add all kinds of features, and then again, we can take those elements and apply it back into our really complex level. So over here, let's add some nice simple enemies. One awesome pack that is currently on sale is this one, the Heroic Fantasy Creatures Ultimate Collection Bundle. This contains an insane amount of creatures. All of them look really awesome, they're super high quality. This one contains a truly insane amount of creatures. So like that, you've got a Demon Lord, the Evil Watcher, Golem, you've got a Darkness Spider, Fantasy Wolf, you've got a Hydra, Dragonite, a Ghoul, Mummy, Skeleton Knight. So really, all kinds of characters, all those that you could possibly imagine. There's actually three packs within this one, so that is an insane amount of characters. For example, look at these ones over here. So there's nice Hydra, some kind of Phoenix, some kind of Demon Lord, all of them looking really cool. And again, the whole thing comes pre-rigged with all the animation, so this is a great pack. In this case, I just want some simple enemies, so let's go ahead and use this one, this nice little ghoul. It comes with some nice animation, so with just a simple walking code, again, using the exact same character control that I'm using for my own character, just being driven automatically by the AI. Using that, yep, over here we've got a nice ghoul walking. Okay, great. Now, obviously, we want to be able to damage this ghoul. And let's do something fun. Let's make some kind of targeting system. So something kind of like Final Fantasy, where I see the character in front of the screen, automatically targets that character, and any attacks that I do will go towards that character. So up here, I just wrote some simple code to handle the targeting. So basically, just as a sphere cast from the camera's position pointing forward, just goes there with a certain radius and by a certain max distance. So basically, tries to find all the objects right in front of the camera, then just tries to identify are those enemy objects. If so, then set that as a target. Then I just set a simple target indicator just to be able to see which one is the current active target. And over here, if I look towards it, yep, there you go, that one becomes a target as long as I look towards it. Okay, great. Now all we have to do is make sure that spells go automatically towards the target. So it's also quite simple. So the script that is on the projectile is just this script. So basically this one takes in a target fantasy enemy and really just on update, just transform the position, just move towards that enemy. And as soon as it gets close enough, basically just spawn the explosion transform and just destroy itself. So over here, if I aim towards it and I charge my spell and I fire it, and if there I go, it goes straight towards the enemy. Okay, so that's great. Now, since we already have a system kind of like this, it would be nice to have some kind of UI. And thankfully, we have another great pack, the Medieval Kingdom UI. So this is the perfect kind of UI for our game. This kind of thing you see in pretty much any kind of fantasy game, any kind of MMO, something like that. So over here, yep, we've got a really nice Medieval Kingdom UI. Then we've got all kinds of buttons, all of them looking really cool. Then we've got all kinds of things, changing the various uh, races. Then we've got some banners, some information. So it's a really nice UI pack. All of the art looks really cool. It even has a nice loading screen. So here I just basically drag and drop this prefab. Basically just shows the kind of character. So then just combining this with the targeting system. And now if I go and I look at that, yep, there you go. That one is hidden and that one is shown. So I can now see a nice visual indicator of what is it that I'm currently targeting. And I can see how much health, how much mana, the name, the icon, and so on. So yep, really nice. Now, of course, let's actually damage our enemy. So for that, once again, I'm going to use another tool from my CodeMonkey Toolkit asset. This time, let's use the health system. So this is pretty simple, just a really nice, solid, well-rounded health system. I can deal damage, I can heal, I've got all kinds of events. So yep, definitely perfect. 
So here on the enemy character, I just went ahead and I had the component, the health system component, just to find the health amount max and that's it. And then inside it, I also had the health bar UI world canvas. So this one is included in my toolkit. So basically it already comes with the health system and UI, so there's really nothing else you need to do. Then over here on the projectile code, over here just when it touches an enemy, let's try to damage the enemy. And for damage, really just goes on that health system component, gets the health system and deals some kind of damage. Then of course, check if it is that, and if so, in this case, really just spawn the goon that transform. So that's just a dummy character that's not the actual enemy itself, just to play the dead animation. So now, yep, there you go, I can now target the enemy, charge the spell, there you go, fires towards it, goes towards it, deals damage, and charge another spell, yep, deals some more damage, another one. So now he's got 16 health left, let's charge one last one, fire it, and if there you go, dies, and I can kill the enemy. Alright, awesome, that's cool. Now since it's a fantasy game, since it's some kind of RPG, naturally we need to have some experience. So let's deal some experience when the enemy dies, and importantly let's show a nice pop-up showing how much experience we gained. So I made very simply, really just a cube and just a texture, but just like this looks a little bit boring, so let's polish it up a little bit more. And for polishing 3D objects, the all-in-one 3D shade is absolutely excellent. This is a really great tool that helps you add all kinds of modifications to your 3D objects. You can make them shake, you can change the visual, you can do all kinds of things, and importantly, it is very easy to animate. So over here on this one, just had the add all-in-one 3D shader, and it automatically adds a shader, and over here we've got all kinds of things we can play with. So I just went ahead, I just enabled over here the vertex shake, just to make it shake a little bit more, so there you go, the cube shakes quite nicely. And then the start, in order to make it glow and then go away, I just went ahead and I added the hit effect. And over here on this one, I can basically make it glow, I can make it glow, and then with an animation, I can bring it down. Then just some simple code that listens to when any fantasy enemy dies, and if so, really just spawn that prefab. And now here I am, and if I go ahead towards the goal, and I actually kill that ghoul, so just one more. And if we go, some nice XP, nice and animated, that's cool. Okay, now that we can kill enemies and we can gain the XP, Let's actually add some nice quests. So I went ahead and implemented a very simple quest system. This one is intentionally meant to be very simple. Literally just has a title and an is complete boolean flag. Then just a list of quest objects. Then just some functions to add, complete, or get the quests. And then over here on the NPC script, so when I interact with the NPC, let's go ahead and give a nice quest. So it's going to be a quest to kill a certain amount of ghouls. And basically it's going to listen to when any ghoul dies. Basically when it does, then it's going to update the ghoul count. And once we kill enough ghouls, let's say five ghouls, if so, then the quest has been completed. And of course, for the visual, let's use a nice visual from our UI pack. So we've got something that looks quite nice. And then for dynamically creating all the quests, for that, I'm using another tool from my toolkit, the templates. So this one's technically not really a tool. It's just a very useful technique. It's basically how you can spawn all kinds of objects without requiring tons of single-use prefabs. So yep, I've got the quest UI over there. Let's go ahead, talk to the NPC in order to get the quest. There you go, kill five ghouls. Now I can go ahead and just kill a bunch of these ghouls. Just try to kill them all. And there you go, get some nice XP. And yep, we've killed one, so let's kill all the other ones. And actually right now, actually the game is very spammable, so I can just press and spam and fire all of this. And that is a little bit way too overpowered. Yeah, there you go, we've got our nice quest completed. Okay, great. Now we can take all these mechanics and just apply it back to our original level. Which, by the way, the only thing that you need to make sure in order to be able to use a sandbox scene and a normal scene, just make sure that all those things are prefabs. And as you update those prefabs, then you can keep them synchronized between the sandbox scene and the main scene. So yep, over here I've got all my nice prefabs. So yep, here I am outside, let's go ahead and go inside. So let's go ahead and interact with our nice gate. Like that, yep. Now we've got the NPC. Okay, let's stalk and get our new quest. Yep, there you go, we've got our quest. And now let's go past this gate. And now let's fight and kill those ghouls. Let's go ahead, fire our nice spells. Deal tons of damage to all the ghouls. They all go, they all die, we gain the XP. And our quest is nice and updated. All right, awesome. So yep, here we have a nice fantasy RPG made pretty quickly by using all kinds of assets. We've got a character controller. We've got the actual character itself. So we've got all kinds of animations. We also built the world. We set up some nice enemies. We created some NPCs. We used an interaction system. We created a quest system, created a targeting system. We used a nice UI, some nice visual effects for the spells and put it all together into a nice experience. So yep, this is a great example of what you can build, how you can use all kinds of assets to make something really awesome. Go ahead and check out everything on the sale right now. Like I said, the assets that I use here, these are part of the Flash deal, the Fantasy Friday. So these are currently 70% off, so definitely get it quickly. And browse everything else on sale. So really all of the top assets, those are all currently discounted. So if you don't have any of these top rated assets, chances are a lot of them would be very useful to whatever game you're working on. So if there's anything you need, then now is definitely a great time to get it. Alright, so thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.